All right, technical difficulties. I think we are good now. So we're gonna do the time belt water pump on this customer's 96 Sambar KS4. I've got a video probably going up Sunday on the no start issue that this vehicle had when it came here. And uh, right now we're gonna do the time belt water pump or as much as we can before it gets dark. So this being a 96, it has EGR. So we had to take loose the EGR pipe. There's a 12 millimeter headed bolt back here that mounts the pipe to the front of the block or the cylinder head, not exactly sure where now. There's a 22 millimeter nut on either end at the EGR valve and down at the exhaust manifold you gotta take loose. Uh, you gotta pop the heat shield off to get to that nut, but it just has a little C-clamp to pop off of that EGR pipe. So uh, now that that's out of the way, we can just pull it out. And it's basically the same as the other time and belt jobs we've done on other sandbars in the past. I've done two or three really good uh, step by steps with the um, torque specs and all that. So we're just going to try to run through this really quickly or uh, try to try to do a live stream auto repair. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it might not go well, but uh, get you set up on the tripod. Sorry for the shaky cam. All right. So we got that EGR pipe out of the way. Now we should be able to just get at it as normal. Already pulled the drain bolt, 12 millimeter out of the bottom of the water pump to drain the coolant out of the engine block. So now we need to go ahead and take loose the crank pulley. Oh, come on M12. Not enough mustard in the gas. Let me go get my half inch. So guys, I'll try to keep up with the comments if there are any, but uh, I'm basically gonna be working and not trying to look at the phone. So forgive me if I miss your comments, questions, etc., along the way. Man, someone really tightened the crap out of that thing. Let's go get the big dog half inch. High torque. Doing the last two sandbars I had, I never had one uh, come off this hard. Yeah, you ain't staying in there when the high torque comes out. So, got that out of the way. Crank pulley off. Go ahead and get the timing cover out of here. Let's see, we gotta get the dipstick loose first. I think we've got to pull it completely out of there. Fully expect a really bad camshaft seal leak uh, due to the amount of oil built up on this timing cover. Looking too terrible. But we need to get the belt out of the way to really know. All these bolts are getting stuck in the socket, too. Let's 
This thing does need a side engine mount. It's getting pretty uh, saggy. So we'll go ahead and get another timing cover off. Looks like that uh, crank pulley has been eating into this timing belt cover. Looks like someone's been in here before and they didn't get the gasket correctly in the groove and it pushed it up into that crank pulley. Bad thing here is I don't believe that this guy that uh, has this got those gaskets for the timing covers. He did provide parts, but I don't think he had those with the parts provided. Last bolt. And last bit of our timing cover off. Yeah, you can see right there where that uh, crank pulley was really eating that timing cover up right there. And I assume it's just because uh, this gasket was not fully seated. And uh, the bad thing about these gaskets on these and the older EJs is uh, anytime you get any kind of oil leakage on them, they swell up and then they don't fit back in the groove. And if you don't have a new gasket to replace it with, they don't wanna go back together correctly and they'll sit proud or uh, crap will get in behind the timing cover. And that seal's there for a reason, it's to keep moisture and debris and stuff from getting in there. So uh, good to have replacements of those on hand when you do these time belt replacements, either on an EJ series engine or on these little EN07s. That time belt is really loose. They did not properly tension this belt. That's concerning. Good thing uh, we're going in here and catching this stuff. That belt is way too loose, way too loose. So. Go ahead and loosen the tensioner, get the belt out of there, and uh, get the whole water pump off. They're always a pain to get off there because there's two steel alignment dowels, and they get bad about corroding. Uh, aluminum block, aluminum water pump, but the dowels are steel and dissimilar metals. They'll uh, seize up pretty good. I've seen people on the sandbar community that have actually uh, broken chunks out of the water pump and uh, cracked their engine blocks by prying on these things to get them off, and uh, it just not want to let go. So, first of all, we need to put the engine in time before I forget that. So go ahead and put this back in there and rotate the engine. Time mark is right here. Or I thought it was, I wiped it away. That wasn't the time mark, but let's see. Time mark is back here, the dot, and you gotta line it up with this little pointer right here. And there's a mark and a pointer on the cam pulley up here. I don't know if I can show you my finger is right up here but uh, again we've covered that in the other videos in the past that are uh, more in depth than uh, what we're doing here today so uh, go ahead and uh see if i got a 17 wrench to uh rotate the engine and get it in time before we take the belt off Yeah, definitely a loosey-goosey belt. That is not a good thing. Again, guys, I will try to look at your comments as you uh, post them, but again, try and knock this job out or get as close as I can. We got the crank lined up right there. Is the cam lined up or we gotta go around another? Nope, oh, we're in time right there. We were very close. Wipe the uh, cam pulley off. Our notch is aligned there. Our dot, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know how good a quality uh, the live stream is coming through, but dot and a pointer are lined up, so we're good there. Uh, let's see, I think it's 12 millimeter for the tensioner. Sorry guys if I'm blocking your view as well. There's not much room under here to uh, put the camera for me to be, to work and uh, show you all at the same time, so. I'm gonna try to do the best I can. Really had that tensioner tight though. The bolt that is, not the uh, tension on the belt. So I'll go ahead and loosen this up. Yeah, 
there's the problem. So uh, they, uh, whoever was in here last and did a time belt job somehow forgot to uh, release this bolt, allow the spring to tension the belt before tightening the bolt up. They had it kicked back out of the way. And man, it's just so lucky this thing did not jump time and wreck the engine. Who knows how long it's been like that, but uh, they definitely got lucky. So what we need to do is take another wrench and we'll grab this little tab back here and press the tensioner up against that spring. Really helped if I have a combination wrench, but I don't think I got one to reach. Wait, I got my 22. The 22 I used for the uh, EGR pipe. Hopefully it's not too big to get in here. But uh, we'll push up on that little tab against the spring and then we'll tighten down the bolt here to lock the tensioner in place. Giving us enough slack to get our belt off of there. All right, tensioner is detensioned. Well, hang on guys, I just saw a comment pop up. I'm gonna try to, I'm doing this live on my phone. Sorry about the jiggling there. I don't know exactly. Let's see, here we go. Uh, white pen works, white paint pen works well for bad eyes. Yep, 2013 Legacy has a vibration from the center console and steering wheel going at highway speed, replace front tires, got a limit. Tire balance issue persist. Tips, uh, I would start checking control arm bushings, ball joints, and uh, tie rod ends, something probably in your suspension going on. Or you could just have a tie rod around, give me PTSD. Damn it, come on. Uh, I snapped the time belt on a 2005 back in the day. I'm way to the part store to pick up the time belt for it. Oh my God, the irony. My Subaru Legacy, rear differential, Jerk and clunk noise while shifting and accelerating. I have changed differential bushing two times, but problem not solved. Anyone can help if you check your transmission uh, mounts, engine mounts, all that stuff. I mean, anything in the drivetrain can uh, transfer that to sound like it's coming from other places. Motor mounts, please check and please, uh, motor mounts, check, please, and transmission. Yep. That's what I would suggest. Check the other mounts. It might not be the rear diff mounts. It might be something else in the drive line uh, causing that to uh, feel like it's coming from elsewhere. So now that we got that tensioned up, let's go see if we can uh, take that out without rotating anything because we're going to get the crank and cam seal replaced while we're in here. Go ahead and get our belt off of there. Our little baby bitty timing belt for the EN07. I can still see the writing on it, so it's not terribly old, but the owner brought me the parts wanted to put on there because, of course, this is a Japanese import vehicle and they don't know when the services were done last on it. So this is a Subaru Genuine Belt, 13028KA090. So uh, I still can barely make out the writing on the belt, so it's not too terribly old serpentine belt on the other hand i already had off it's uh seen better days we're definitely going to need to uh sell them a serpentine belt while we're in here because it's already cracked and frayed and the grooves are pretty deep on it so we're going to go ahead and loosen that tensioner now let it shoot to the bottom and we'll take our bolt out of there and take our spring loose get our old tensioner off we were brought a new tensioner I need to get the tensioner out of the way anyway to get the water pump off. Our crank cog timing pulley should pull right off there by hand. No issue. Oh man, come on. All right, we'll just leave the spring in there. Yeah, these side seals for the water pump are all swollen too. That's another thing a lot of people don't get. And judging from this debris in here, that looks like possibly time belt chunks from uh, a failure in the past. So we'll put this off to the side till we get the new one ready to put on. Go ahead and pull, hopefully pull it off easily. Come off of there, you little booger. 
do with that later. We need to, we got a crank and a cam seal to replace. So let's see if we can get this water pump out of here without too much of a headache. Go grab a 12 millimeter socket. I'm gonna need to take this cam pulley off too. I have to go get my KTC AE81, I think's that little spanner wrench from Japan. Used it quite a bit. I'm really glad I picked that up. All right, so let's get those licks up. I think you meant likes there, right? <laughs> Either way, I appreciate it. So I uh, can't remember if these Coke and Universal uh, sockets fit in here or not, but uh, I think we can get it to work. So get these six water pump bolts out of here. That's really gonna be a pain these stupid side seals. I keep forgetting about them, but again, guy brought parts. That one's not gonna come out at an angle. That one came loose. We also have a new thermostat to install, but uh, it's way back over there. Not something I can probably show you on camera. We're gonna have to pull that dipstick tube out, I think. Thought in the past I was able to wiggle them a little bit and not have to pull them completely out of the engine block, but because I don't think I've got an O-ring to put back on it. There we go. Eh, it's just a generic O-ring. I can probably grab one on the AC kit. All right, two long bolts, of course, for the water pump go to the top. The four smaller ones go to the bottom. So everything's out except this one right here. It's just not wanting to play nice. Oh, there we go. I guess I had too much of an angle on it the first time for it to come out of there. So we'll just go ahead and set that back in there. Actually, let's go ahead and take it all the way out. This is gonna be on the way when we're taking the water pump off and on. So uh, here's always the fun part. Can we pry this water pump off here without it cracking or being seized on those stupid little alignment dowels? There's one right there poking up. And the second one is right down here. So uh, yeah, fun times. Looks like these seals up here are fine because they were dry and didn't get swollen with oil and fluids, but uh, these down here are going to be a nightmare to get lined back in with that new water pump. They're definitely swollen up from uh, oil and junk. I think I'm about to go grab a slightly longer pry bar for this one. I think this might be a good spot for the inaugural run of the uh, Mayhew demo drivers. They're probably good for this. What we're working on is a 1996 Subaru Sambar KS4 with an EN07 658cc inline four engine. We're doing a time belt and water pump replacement. Or at least the tipting too, because uh, this is the worst part of it is getting the water pump off. because they seize on these stupid alignment dowels. It's 
it's been lord over a year i think since i've done one of these engines and i can't remember exactly where i would attack from angle wise to uh pry on the water pump but you do get a pry it but it ain't gonna come off of there This way and get behind. The blade's too big on that. Is it over here? Try to pry next to this uh, alignment dowel. It looks like it didn't, uh, it came out of the block and they kind of just put it in the water pump instead of back in the engine block. That's one thing about these dowels on these water pumps. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> a lot of times I'll come out with the old pump and uh, pull it out of the block and people just won't uh, get in there and put them back together. And actually, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and get this cam pulley and rear timing belt cover out of the way just to give us a little more access to get at it on the side over here. So uh, let's actually do that first. All right, we got the cam pulley out of there. Let's get our uh, rear timing cover. And I really love these little uh, Coking Universal swivels. Not sure we can get that one with this. Remember right, there's one that I can never get with one of these little swivels. And I think it's that bolt right there. Yeah, so uh, you can see that uh, side seal is just boogered up good. And yes, our cam seal is definitely leaking over here. So is our rocker cover, but we got a new rocker cover gasket to put on as well. So not terribly worried about that. Let's get some of this schmoo out of the way. All right, now that we got the cam pulley and rear timing cover out, hopefully we can get this water pump off of there a little easier. I 
Let that one come loose. Oh, beautiful. Looks like she's gonna give it up and come off easily. Definitely got a wiggle waggling. That's another thing about these that's a pain in the butt is getting that gasket, the water pump gasket on the back of these. It's a little molded gasket, but it is a pain to get it to stay up there uh, in between the water pump and the block when you're putting the new one on there. All right, so we're wiggling up here. We are wiggling back here. I thought we were. And we're wiggling down here. That's the dowel pin, that's a pain. Trying to get it off of there and there's no real good place to pry against around that dowel right there. But it's oily from an oil leak, so hopefully it's not too stuck. wiggling again you know you could just go reefing on this thing but I don't want to break it I don't want to gouge the engine block it's just one of those things it's just a pain about these engines otherwise they're very easy to work on they're just those little quirks every once in a while things are a pain a little more difficult let's say and this is one of those things is getting the water pump off Good thing we're not too worried about beating the water pump up since we got a new one, but sometimes it takes a little bit of percussive maintenance to get that thing to let go. So we'll just work it back and forth. Pretty sure we're free on the bottom. It's just this top dowel. Come on, give up. Come off. You know you're going in the trash. 
be going in the aluminum scrap pile. Your time has come. Come on now. Come on. Just a little more. Oh man, really getting humiliated by a water pump, aren't I? Whoop, I think we might have got her. There's one of those uh, water pump side seals is oil soaked and swollen and gross. We'll have to see if we can try to reuse that because we don't have another one. One of the bad things about customer supplied parts, sometimes they don't supply everything you need. No dig at the customer, just sometimes they don't know uh, what all's required. Come on. Come out of there and don't break that dowel. And there we go. It wasn't so difficult now, was it? Ugh. So yeah, there's our other side seal, which is uh, really bad. And uh, yeah, this water pump has definitely seen better days. Likely they did not replace the water pump when they uh, did the time belt last. Looks like they might've just slapped a belt on it. So good that we're in here. Go ahead and grab her old gasket. And now we lastly need to try to get this sprocket off of here without breaking it. I'm not sure why it's not sliding off. Normally they'll come off by hand. Yeah, now the fun part is uh, driving that one pin out that got stuck. There's always one dowel at least to get stuck in these EN07 water pumps. Luckily this one stayed in the block. Uh, should be good there. <laughs> Again, it had a, a nice size of oil leak covering it. So, uh, you know, uh, it stayed lubricated. It didn't seize up in there. You can see where all that oil was uh, leaking around that dowel. So uh, we'll have to drive that one out for the new water pump. And uh, we'll need to clean up all this uh, mess because there is a little bit of a uh, high and low spot here where the ceiling surface is. So let's see if we can get that crank sprocket out of there without busting it. Hopefully it just needs a little light prying. And be careful of that because sometimes just a little pressure can uh, crack these things. We don't want that because don't have another one lying around and can't wait for one to come from Japan. There we go. And there we are. So crank seal is nice and dry, but we've got a new one. We're going to replace it. Cam seal is leaking. We are going to be replacing it as well. I'm going to get some brake parts cleaner and get ready to clean and prep all this and uh, make it look nice again and grab my seal pullers to uh, pull the cam and crank seals out of there.
And again, guys, I'm, I'm only doing this as a live stream today because uh, I got the whim to do it. Uh, if you want a really good comprehensive guide on the time belt water pump service for the EN07 on the sandbar, uh, I've got, I think, at least two different versions of the, uh, or two different video versions of this job with all torque specs and, you know, cleanly edited step by step. This is a shooting from the hip cowboy live kind of deal here, so not gonna be as uh, nice and polished. Clean up the oil on this oil pump where it's been leaking. Probably gonna go ahead and change his oil and get this stupid Fram filter off here. We got some uh, black Tokyo Roki Japanese import uh, K truck filters in stock, so probably go ahead and do that for him not knowing how long it's been since the oil was changed but uh while we're doing everything else you know might as well uh, judging from the uh dirt and debris on this frame oil filter at least it's been a while so get in here with the scrub brush around the water pump but we're gonna have to go get the uh, die grinder and a 3m bristle disc to really get this uh, crud off of here and then you get a blow gun too and blow out these uh, bolt holes for the water pump bolts don't want to hydro lock those and uh, Crack the block down in there. If I remember right, I think this sandbar's got like 90, 91,000 kilometers on the clock. So not terribly high mileage, but also not a spring chicken either for a 96. So uh, yeah, it's looking a lot better now. And uh, we'll get that uh, die grinder with the bristle disc on it and uh, clean that up get the cam and crank seal swapped over and uh, put the new water pump in. Clean all the oil and junk off of these bolts too because they're nasty. See if we can uh, get in the comments real quick and see what's going on. Apologies in advance for shaky cam because uh, my tripod is not too stable and uh, when I start touching my phone to see these comments, it's gonna start shaking, so. Is this one supercharged? No, this is a naturally aspirated, but it is air conditioned equipped, which is uh, nice in South Carolina. Did you see the new donut transmission explosions? No, I did not. Uh, Mr. Subaru one water pump zero, heck yeah. Got that joker out of there. Become a mechanic, they said. It's easy, they said. Yep, yep. All for uh, stupid little steel dowel pins and aluminum. Water pump on uh, Subi is 2000. Yeah, the EJ water pumps come off super easy. There's no alignment dowels. It's just uh, aluminum versus aluminum block and uh, some steel bolts, and they just fall off. 
I hate when parts are stuck like that. Yep, yep, yep. Not fun. So I think we're all caught up now on our uh, stuff here. Apologies again if the uh, live stream is crappy looking. I'm just on my uh, cell service out here in BFE, South Carolina. So it might just be coming through in potato vision. I don't know. Hopefully it's uh, decent. A lot of oil build up here on the cross member. We'll knock that off for the guy. Get that looking better. All right, so I'm gonna get the die grinder and we'll start working on all this crap, which I mean, I'll grab a razor blade first, but this stuff's pretty uh, baked on there. Let's get some of those big chunks off, but not great. Actually, I said this was a aluminum block. I think these are actually uh, aluminum block and a steel, or aluminum head and a steel block. Yeah, that's uh, that's not aluminum. Would be nice if they did have an all aluminum engine in them, but. Unfortunately, they do not, so. chunked up there at least I think it's just a high spot I'd be worried if it was a pitted spot I don't think it's pitted I think it's actually a raised spot but yeah I just wish there's a little bit more room to get in here and get after this clean up You can get around most of it, but that M12 uh, right angle die grinder is uh, just a wee bit too bulky. Honestly, for a lot of places I try to get it. I mean, it's really great. Don't get me wrong. I like having it battery powered. I like not having to drag a cord around air hose behind me, but uh, it's just so much bigger because I mean, it has to be because it's electric and not pneumatic. And uh, there's just places that you can't get it into sometimes. So. But uh, we're pretty good there. Uh, get the razor blade again and uh, try to knock down some of these uh, high spots right here. I actually have a carbide scraper from uh, Astro and I haven't really ever used it because you know, most of the time I'm scraping on aluminum stuff, and uh, you can really quickly screw something up. It's carbide scraper on aluminum. Honestly, I think we're pretty good here. Fairly smooth. I mean, we got some staining, but it's smooth. There's no 
ridge or ledge or anything there. But there are a couple spots like right here at the bottom, right here in this transition, this corner and right up here that are a little bit suspect. If I was really smart, I would have already uh, looked up my torque specs for this. And uh, the only factory service manual I or mainly anyone else in the sandbar community can find for these trucks or these engines is very poorly translated in English and there's a lot of stuff missing from it information wise. And all of the torque specs, if I recall correctly, are not newton meters, not foot pounds. They're something else and I have to trans, uh, not translate, um, do conversions to get the proper settings for the torque wrench and in the past of course I've already done it because I've made YouTube videos on it but as a smart man I have them wrote down somewhere or have them saved in my own PDF where I don't have to do the conversions again or go watch my own YouTube video uh, to pull torque specs off of it it's cause sometimes it's easier to do it that way but uh, I think I'm gonna commit myself tonight to sitting down and uh, write myself either a note in my phone or something with these torque specs in newton meters where I don't have to do the conversions again. So I think we are pretty well prepped here. I know it doesn't look beautiful, but um, you know, we are worried about flatness and cleanliness, not so much the staining. Staining is not gonna have any effect on the sealing of that water pump. Looks like I got a super doodly bop here from uh, Nancy. Merry Christmas, Robert, to you and yours. Thank you for the videos this year. Thank you so much for that, Nancy. I greatly appreciate it. And I uh, haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, appreciate that, Frank. Thank you so much. Uh, use that German metric torque guten Tag. Yeah, that doesn't quite work for me. I'm not one of those guys. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time... I'm gonna grab a torque wrench and I'm gonna tighten something up. I mean, factory specs are there for a reason. The engineers know that the bolts need to be tightened that specific torque setting for a reason uh, is there. I have the torque wrenches. It literally doesn't take that much more time to grab a torque wrench and set it, then grab a ratchet and uh, tighten it down. So, you know, if you're gonna do something, do it right. And uh, might as well torque it to the factory spec because it's uh, the right thing to do. And then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to lay in bed at night you know, thinking about what you worked on that day and, huh, did I tighten that bolt all the way? Was it tight enough? Did I tighten it too much and it uh, kind of snapped, but it didn't snap. And uh, now it's just sitting in there like a little ticking time bomb to when that bolt is actually going to completely fracture and fail and something's going to come loose or, you know, there's just too many what ifs with auto repair. I mean, not always are you in a life and death situation, but if you're working on, you know, a hub bearing assembly or uh, an axle or brakes or, you know, steering components. I mean, that's life and death kind of stuff there. Like you don't tighten up a, a lug nut or a hub assembly or, you know, a tie rod in or something and that comes loose and someone has a wreck and someone dies and that's coming back to you and that is not going to be a good time. So, you know, just take the time, do it right. You don't have to worry about things like that coming up. So, let's see if we can get it here.
All right, that's much better. <laughs> I said I wasn't too worried about it, but there I am going and uh, still working at it. Honestly, with this being steel and not aluminum, I could just go get a regular uh, Rolock 3 um, in scotch Bright pad and get it this and not really hurt it, but I've just got so many of the 3M bristle discs because I'm used to working on EJs and F-Series that are aluminum and uh, those scotch Bright circle discs will uh, eat that aluminum up before you know it, whereas the 3M bristle discs uh, are nowhere near as abrasive. So I'm just going around, that is actually a little pitted, but uh, I mean, as thick as that uh, O-ring is on that water pump, that molded gasket, I don't think there's really any worry about it leaking, but. but sometimes I just can't help myself and go over and be uh, over and over and above on uh, prep and cleaning for. Uh, install so all right i'm gonna call that that's that's gonna be good enough that's gonna be good enough so we got our box of parts down here grab things out so our time belt he brought us was a misaboshi misaboshi is the oe manufacturer for the subaru branded belts we've got a, a fj 2001 Fate of the Tribeca, man. I haven't thought about the Tribeca in like a year since I bought it. Uh, when I got it, all of the timing components were missing from the engine completely, uh, as well as a lot of the components for um, brain fart intake and the fuel system. A lot of that stuff was missing, and the exhaust manifold and caps were off of it. And uh, the guy didn't have a title for it, so it wasn't really worth fixing. I've just got it for parts right now. So we got some carb parts he already installed that he brought and left in the box of parts. We've got some bulk vacuum tubing. I won't be installing because the vacuum hoses were fine. Uh, that was part of the no start concern. We thought there was an issue there, but again, that video will be up Sunday on this car about the no start. It was a pretty easy fix actually. Uh, we just had to go and adjust, I had to go and adjust the idle speed on the carburetor and adjust the timing uh, time and light, you know, old school stuff. I think I've covered it in videos in the past. I don't think I've covered the idle speed or the mixture speed or mixture adjustment screws for the carbs on these, but I do touch on it in that video coming up Sunday. This is our uh, rocker cover gasket. These are the cam and crank gaskets. These I don't believe, these are not factory, but it does say Koyo on them, so they might be factory just... Uh, not white labeled as Subaru. I don't see, not seeing made in Japan on here, but it is in uh, kanji, so it might be made in Japan. I'm not sure. Uh, we got our thermostat here, Japanese thermostat. I'm not sure if this is the OE uh, for this or not, but uh, this is the one provided. And again, thermostat's way back over here, so probably won't be able to show you that. We got our time belt tensioner, it's a GMB. Uh, GMB probably isn't the OE on these. I think they were NSK. I'm not sure. There's the part number there if you want non Subaru factory parts. And he brought us a GMB uh, water pump, part number there. Yada, yada, yada. So let's get this new water pump out. We got our new gasket here for it. We got some paperwork in here. I don't believe it'll give us our factory torque specs. That's one thing I gotta say. I love about the Japanese culture and stuff with these directions. If you've ever bought an XZ clutch kit and looked at this stuff, they always have these funny little cartoons. Uh, they're talking about the poor fit of the water pump to the block or talking about uh, being not flushly mounted and the pulley not spinning correctly and uh, properly tensioning your belt so it doesn't squeal. Uh, I just love that stuff. It's so funny to see the little cartoons and caricatures right there. But, um, yeah, eggs the, eggs the uh, clutches, I think it was probably the first time I saw that kind of thing. And I thought it was hilarious. And I think they still have some of the best instructional cartoon caricatures out there that I've run across. So, uh, 
here is our new water pump as I get it out of the plastic. It does have a different impeller than the one that came off of it. As you can see, it's an open blade impeller. And uh, our old water pump was a uh, closed blade circular impeller. So a little bit different there, but dimensionally they line up. So it will work and it will cool the engine. I do not see Japan anywhere on here. So I'm not sure if it was made in Japan. But uh, I'll go ahead and get the uh, gasket out. This is the worst part, I swear about this, is uh, these gaskets are so finicky about falling out of this groove. I don't know why they didn't put like a, I don't know, they put like, there's a little peening sometimes in these that will grip onto these little molded gaskets. I mean, you see if you get it up here like this, and if you tilt it just slow slightly, uh, it'll come loose and then you can pinch it over and it not align correctly and then you get a leak. I mean, it, it just doesn't sit perfectly. Now I know there's like some not RTV, uh, it's a adhesive or a gasket adhesive is what they call it rather than RTV silicone that you can just kind of tack on the back side of this to hold a gasket in place, but I don't believe I have any on hand. And I really don't like to use it. I mean, if I can get away without it, I will. So um, just remember now we got to put that dowel alignment dowel in there. So you got to go get a punch and chisel and knock that alignment dowel out of the old water pump, get it in the block. And wow, that is actually a plastic impeller. That is a carbonate uh, composite plastic impeller. Not, not too keen on that. We had a steel one on our uh, old water pump, but again, that's what the customer brought us. So that's what we're installing. So I'm going to knock this old uh, dowel out, get it back in the block, and uh, we'll get ready to put this water pump on. All right, so I'm not sure uh, how much battery life I've got left on my phone. Hopefully it doesn't die here. I tried to swipe, but I don't think I can see it while we're live streaming, and we can't. So I got that alignment dowel out, went ahead and put it in my wire wheel to clean it up, because of course we're not gonna put it crusty and dusty and dirty back in there. So we'll go ahead and uh, get that ready to go back in there. I don't think we've got anything in the bore. Honestly, I should have put a little bit of oil on it. Yeah, we're good. There's nothing in there. So I'll go ahead and get that in there. And we should be good there. Should be good. Get that 
a little bit of oil there. I think this is some kind of uh, heat exchange here or something where the oil runs right up here and deadheads under the bottom part of the water pump, but I'm not exactly sure. So, uh, all right, got that. Let's see if we can get this water pump up here without the gasket falling out or getting uh, crooked on us. This is always a stressful part for me. So uh, I'll get ready to throw the water pump up there and uh, run these bolts in. I like to try to get to the back so I can kind of watch from the side and make sure that gasket does not move around on us. Ah, I forgot about those stupid side seals. So we gotta figure out something about that as well because they're swollen and deformed. I mean, technically you can leave them out of there just like with the EJ series engines. I mean, you can leave the seals out of the front and rear timing covers, but you have to worry about crap getting inside where your timing belt is. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want a bunch of dirt and mud and water and all kinds of junk getting in there to my timing belt. So I'll hit this stuff with brake parts cleaner and uh, we'll just see how swollen it actually is. I mean, I know it's swollen, but will it go in? Oh, let's see. Could have sworn that was supposed to go around that bolt. That's the thing that sucks about doing these so infrequently. You kind of forget about things and where what goes and how it goes. And So this one goes on the side of the water pump. It's got a little notch there that grabs into that notch and then it's bent so it doesn't block that water pump bolt and then that goes there but again it's swollen out so we'll see if it slides in there or not or if it binds up and gives us issue and then the other side is this seal that's super swollen again with oil and debris and crap getting into it and making it no good Again, I'll clean all the oil and crap off of it. It's not gonna magically shrink back down to its proper size. I mean, all the heat cycles and age and absorbing all that leaking oil and crap. I mean, it's not gonna go back the way it was. I have in the past uh, cut sections out of the old seals and super glued them to get them to the correct dimensions to work. But uh, it's a pain in the butt and it's labor intensive and it's still not going to seal the way it should uh, compared to just putting a brand new factory gasket on there like it should have. So that one goes, supposed to fit on that ledge and then in this indentation here, but you see how much longer it's gotten, it's grown uh, just from the oil contamination. So I'm actually going to go into the shop and look around. I think I might have another full set of uh, Subaru timing components for a K uh, EN07, and if I do, I'm probably just gonna sell them those gaskets and uh, reorder. That way, I won't have to worry about fit finish, and it'll it'll be done right, you know. So, I'm gonna go dig around and see if I've got these gaskets or not.
So guys, unfortunately, I forgot that <laughs> that spare set of uh, diamond components for an EN07 I used on my last sandbar. So uh, we do have some of the old seals that came off that car and or the truck, and luckily they were not swollen up because that last truck only had like 36,000 kilometers on it, and I just did it for age rather than uh, contamination. So these aren't swollen, so we'll reuse these or use these on this engine instead just so uh we got something there and it's better than nothing but uh yeah i do need to go and uh order replacements for those parts because i like to have them on hand so uh that goes on that side and we can put that in later uh this one is still a problem because i don't have it Only the instructions follows time belt brake pads etc if you Sorry for a shaky cam. Uh, it's funny with the instruction follows, timing belt, brake pads, etc. If you have no experience, don't try it. Yeah. Dang it. It would be very interesting to see more videos about the EZ30R components, description, great engine. Japanese writing on the box. Japanese writing. Speaking of translating, crazy man. What's up, guys? Ha <laughs> ha CP the Pizza Attic. That's a great one. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to try to cut this one down and uh, put it in there after we get the water pump in. This side, you can put these in afterwards. This one really needs to go in with the water pump because if I remember right, I don't think you can just slide it in there, but maybe you can. It looks like it just slides in, so we'll try to slide it in afterwards. So let's go ahead again and... Uh, try to line this water pump up get it stuck on there and uh start tightening our bolts up so here comes the stressful part making sure this all stays where it should too easy. I'm pull that back out and make sure everything's in there. So I'm going to stab it on there and uh, send it home. Man. Trying to get the pocket flashlight out where I can really see down in here. stresses me out so much. I'm always worried that's not gonna go right. All right. Ah, crap. All right, good. All right, we are on there. I know you're probably sitting there saying, Jesus, Mr. Subaru, go ahead and stab that water pump on there. And again, I'm just so worried about that stupid gasket and the way that they put it up there with no kind of 
um, anything around the perimeter to hold it in place. I mean, it literally just is sitting there, static clinging on, but uh, finally confirmed that, uh, you know, it was on there and it was flush and it was in its groove and it didn't come out and didn't get pinched. I'd rather take my time and make sure it was good than stab it on there and that not be perfectly lined up and then we have a leak and then we got to go in and do it again. I mean, as my uh, high school football coach and gym teacher used to tell us, do it right, do it light, do it wrong, do it long. Do it right the first time, you don't have to do it again. Take a little extra time to be right the first time. You don't have to worry about it. So we'll go ahead and just snug these up. I'll grab the torque wrench and uh, we'll send them home. Uh, where'd my little nut driver go? Jeez. It's always the, where's that tool I just had five seconds ago, right? There it is. Whoop. Again, sorry for smacking the camera, guys. Alrighty, looking like an engine again. So while we're at this stage, might as well go ahead and uh, pull that old cam seal and crank seal and get those replaced. So uh, I think we'll do that now. I said earlier I was gonna go get my seal puller, but I forgot to do that while I was in there. Let's see if we can slide this seal in here. Oh yeah, look at that, perfect. Perfect, looks like it was made to go there or something, right? And then we've got this one that goes right here, perfection. And then we've got this one that goes over here. And then we got this long boy over here that goes in that corner, but we're gonna have to cut it down because it grew a quarter inch. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get the um, seal puller and uh, get that next. Right after I clean up some of the crud on this uh, crank sprocket. A lot of uh, build up and crap down here. And just uh, knock it loose with the uh, brush and then hit it with brake parts cleaner. Finish it off. Uh, brake parts cleaner, my favorite libation, just like uh, Erico on South Main Auto, except I don't uh, have the cool little dramatic sound effect uh, when I use it like he does. Although I haven't seen an Erico video in quite a while. I used to get them and recommended all the time, but found myself not on YouTube as much lately, like just watching stuff. Or when I am, I'm looking at guns and ammo and Stuff like that. I've been on a kick here recently of uh, purchasing firearms. So uh, I haven't been watching too much auto repair. Sometimes you get kind of burned out on it between uh, doing it and uh, watching it too. But it's always good to see someone else working how they do things, how they attack problems and diagnose stuff differently than you do because uh, that's how we learn is seeing others and their thought processes on things and might be different than something you've done or something you've never thought to do. It's always good to see someone else's perspective on things.
I have, uh, speaking of Eric Owen South Main Auto, I have noticed that uh, he does watch some of my videos because I've seen him in the comment section on some of my uh, YouTube shorts and I uh, feel a little bit starstruck sometimes. We've never really talked like DM'd or talked or emailed or whatever, but it's funny seeing him in my comments on my YouTube shorts. Gosh, Let's see if we can get that out of there with that long pick. It's not gonna work. I don't want to risk scratching that. We'll get our uh, old Lau seal puller in here. It's just such a pain to get set up sometimes. I'm always concerned. I do not want to scr scratch a crankshaft, that's for sure. Can't remember which way I would attack these. Again, that's the thing about these being such an infrequent vehicle that I work on. They don't have a good rhythm or flow when working on them because I see them so infrequently. And that crank seal is awfully hard. <sighs> Pretty sure this is the way I've gotten them out in the past. I don't know why I thought that pick would work. But uh, maybe I get them this way. Let's see. Probably should have done this before I put the water pump in there. Shit, nah. I said I was going to, but then I didn't. Jeez, that one was really stuck in there. The thing about these that sucks is they're so small, you can't really do the little uh, trick where you uh, put a self-tapping screw in there and then uh, grab the self-tapping screw off a pair of pliers and uh, pull it out of there. Let's see if we can get it right here. Nope, I think I got a good bite there. Now can we get it to uh, pop out of there? <sighs> nope. They probably have never placed this uh, crankshaft seal either. It is super tough. Hardened. Ah, come on. That hurt. Ooh, there went my knuckle. Just love when you're having one of those days where just nothing seems to go right. Jeez. Ah, we are just chewing this seal up and it is not coming out. Uh, good spots to uh, get it, honestly. Let's see if this will do it. Nope. Pulled right out of there. Jeez, come on. Well, if I 
keep on like this. I'll just destroy the seal completely and hopefully it'll just fall out. It just does not want to grab for some reason. It just keeps twisting out. I guess it's just so freaking hard and dry rotted. I don't know. Normally they pop out of there fairly easily. Worried about scratching this uh, crankshaft too. That's definitely the last thing I want to do. where of course I do a live stream and uh, nothing goes to plan but I film a regular repair video and it goes off about a hitch what you gonna do well geez so I do have another one another seal puller I don't think I actually grabbed it. I thought I did. I've used this Lyle one forever. I've got one I got from uh, Japan made by Straight. And uh, yeah, I just don't want to scratch up that crankshaft. Hopefully I haven't already. It's just so weird that it's not wanting to come out of there. I mean, I can get it right under the lip set my stopper and it just wants to kick out of there I guess my I guess my tips bent a little out where it's not wanting to hook in there let me grab that one from uh, Japan that I photographed already and see if I can get it to work actually can I just get it with a prying tool at this point can I just grab that edge and There we go. Now it's just crumbling apart. That thing is super old. It's probably the original uh, crank seal. like I nicked the very outside here but I don't think I nicked inside where the uh, seal actually rides yeah, that thing is uh, it is hard yep no good surprised it wasn't leaking but uh yeah I don't think I actually have a seal install tool for these engines as small as they are i think i normally just use a socket but again i've only done timing on these like three times now so i don't know if there's a normal to it yet of uh processes i use or procedures i use so cranks out hopefully the cam seal comes out much easier because at least it's lubricated up from as much leaking as it's had with this ground cable out of our way Seal's not going to play nice either. What a lovely predicament. Oh, look at there. It's normally how easily I can get them to come out. 
That uh, crankshaft is always just wanting to be a pain in the butt. Oh man, there's always something. So yeah, it's always nice when they just pop out. Man, this thing is super hard, super hard and brittle. Let's see if I can show you just how brittle. Whoop, how brittle it is. Yeah. See, that's uh that's supposed to be viton or uh yeah you can just see how it just cracks and breaks apart as hard as a rock these are original seals got to be with 90,000 kilometers on it so go ahead and get our new cam and crank seal wherever i put them there they are and uh i guess i'll go line up uh, a socket or uh, a press tool out of my toolbox to something similar in size and uh, knock those in there. All right, guys, so looks like for the cam seal, we've got a uh, Miller MB990800 will be the correct one for that. And then for our crankshaft seal, we've got a Miller Tools uh, 6792-1. Should be good fit for that to knock that on there. Now I'm a moron because I just got something this stubby to go over something that long. It is not going to reach. You're like, what the heck was I thinking there? So, <laughs> oh man, it's been a long day. So I think the cam seal will work. I need to get a longer one for the, uh, get her that crank. All right, so for the crank, this probably will be more uh, more fitting, uh, Miller C-3688. And uh, just about the right size, but at least it's long enough to get over that crankshaft. So, get a little bit of oil, put a little bit of oil on the inside of that uh, fresh seal. We'll run that around that inner lip just to help her slide on put a little bit of oil around outside of our crankshaft snoot just the inside we don't want to oil up the outside it'll be tempting to make it slide in easier but if it slides in easier then it might pop out easier so go ahead and uh, set that on there give her a slight twist to get her started and get her 
kind of squared up looking and uh Out at the bottom there. Still a little bit more at the bottom. flush all the way around so that we're a little bit proud right there and a little bit proud right there. And I think we're good and flush all the way around. A little bit more there at the bottom. There we go. Very nice. And put our crank sprocket back on there. I swear this oil can leaks more than it puts out the tip a little bit of oil on there to get that slide on a little bit easier hopefully it won't get stuck next time someone gets in here to take it off good there still need to torque these bolts down still need to grab the torque spec for it and uh cam seal let's see Side. I got some a little bit of corrosion on the outside of the cam. Move that up. And we will twist as we uh, push in so we don't roll the lip. And we'll get it snug up to the cylinder head and a little more at the bottom and I think we're good so much easier than the crankshaft a little bit more at the bottom, maybe. And I'll call that good. So, alrighty. So, all we gotta do now is 
clean up our disgusting timing covers and hardware and it's nice and greasy and oily and lots of buildup and crap on it so uh you get all that schmoo off of there and get that bolted back up there in preparation for putting the canvas bracket back in place still need to torque those water pump bolts can't forget that Just do a little cleany clean on all our fasteners. Knock the crud loose with the brush and then spread away some brake part cleaner. And we'll clean up our time and spring, time and tensioner spring while we're in there as well. Again, guys, I have no idea how much battery life my phone has left, so if the stream drops out, uh, assume my phone died. Although we're probably gonna have to wrap it up here shortly as, uh, we are losing light rapidly. The really crappy thing about winter. Can't stand these short days. Can't stand sunset at 5.30, 5 o'clock getting dark. Everything's dead, it's cold, it's depressing. Just not meant for winter or fall. I am definitely a spring summer kind of guy. can't stand to be cold. I would rather sweat than shiver any day, that is for sure. Luckily, being here in South Carolina, we do not have to worry about all the snow and crap that uh, you northern viewers and Russian dealer, uh, <laughs> Russian dealers, <laughs> Russian viewers, there's a lot of, so crazy, YouTube gives you a breakdown of like uh, your biggest uh, demographics of who's watching you and of course America's number one and then I think Britain is number two but third is actually Russia apparently Subarus and Subaru repair is really big in Russia uh, I'm assuming uh, the parts of Russia they get closer and closer to the uh, Arctic Circle so uh, yeah apparently I need to start uh, having someone translate my videos into Russian for those uh, Russian viewers. All right, so that looks much better, much cleaner. We're not gonna put this thing back together, disgusting and dirty for this customer. Why do we? Why would we do that? It doesn't take that much time to uh, clean it up, make it nice, make it presentable. So uh, that's all squared away. Put that time cover back up there. Throw our fasteners back in.
that on there. We'll go ahead and get our cam sprocket. It needs to be cleaned up because it's filthy as well. Just from all that uh, oil leaking from that cam sensor. So you could be talking in English and I can automatically listen to you in Spanish or whatever other language they input. I missed the first part of that comment apparently. Or maybe you're talking about the, uh, you're talking about YouTube's automatic uh, translating uh, subtitles or are you talking about uh, using Google Translate or something as a standalone? Oh, AI, yeah. Yeah, that would be a good usage for AI, wouldn't it? Translating uh, those YouTube videos in different languages. So, uh, just getting this uh, cam sprocket cleaned up, ready to go back on. We're going to have to get the uh, that KTC tool out to uh, hold this sprocket in place so we can do the final torque. And again, I'm not forgetting. I know i got to get the torque wrench out for... Uh, the uh, water pump bolts. Looks like our time of mark still lined up. That's good. Run these swells back in. And uh, we'll get the torque and stuff. Like a night and day different in there. Nice and clean. You can almost eat out of there. So funny that people rag on me all the time for how do you have such clean hands all the time mr subaru you never get dirty you must not work on anything tub of towels they are not a sponsor uh if they want to hit me up tub of towels but absolutely love tub of towels wipes they're great at uh really getting you uh cleaned up super quick i mean other than <laughs> what's under my fingernails that takes a scrub brush but uh otherwise you know, in two seconds, you can be clean again. To look for a manual, grab your phone, or, uh, you know, grab your torque wrench and get it set.
Let's see. So, oh, geez. Another thing, when a man gets to a certain age that he cannot sit down or stand up without groaning, <laughs> even if it doesn't hurt, although I do hurt. So uh, this is the KTC AE81. We're gonna use that to hold that cam pulley up there in place while we torque it. And real quick, I'm gonna go look at, uh, hey, look, there's our live stream. I'm gonna go look at uh, one of my videos real quick to get the torque specs because uh, I think it'd be quicker that way than uh, looking it up and uh, doing the conversion. So, uh, cannot forget, I still gotta get in there and do that stupid uh, thermostat. But, uh, let's see. Turn our volume down because I don't want to hear my video on my live stream here. But we'll go through and watch this Harbor Freight ad. Of course, Harbor Freight is uh, advertising on my YouTube channel, as hilarious as that is. All right, so, whoop, what'd I say? 16.7 uh, Newton meters for our water pump bolts. Thank you, me. Past me, future, current, present me. Thanks, you. So, uh, Crap, I forgot what I said already. 16.7 Newton meters, right? Let's see. Yeah, 16.7 Newton meters. We've got a different color torque wrench now than when that video is made. Cause this is the uh, new version that just goes a little bit higher. So we're gonna call it 17 Newton meters cause this one will not split. And uh, now we're gonna get in here to uh, torque this, mm, let's see, uh, let's see, that ought to work. All right, good to go on our water pump. Let's refer back to my own video on uh, our cam pulley torque. Let's scrub through this. And we're doing the thermostat now. We're doing the crank seal now, cam seal now. See, me in the past was dumb. I was using that big hammer, uh, trying to drive that in there. New me is smarter because I got a smaller hammer, but there's still not a great amount of room in there to uh, swing a hammer and knock that seal in there. Fast forward, fast forward. And we're installing the cam gear and we are torquing our cam gear too. Ah, I forgot about the uh, Company 23 wrench. That does work too. 11.7 uh, Newton meters. So we're gonna put it 12 Newton meters cause we can't split torques on this one. 12 Newton meters and Let's go torque that, and we're about ready to put our belt back on there. Let's see. Gonna need a deep well socket to reach. 
crazy how low the torque specs are on this engine. It just feels like it's uh, not enough, if you know what I mean. But uh, again, these are really small fasteners, so kind of to be expected. Let's, uh, let's get you there. And we're all set, torquing that cam pulley down. We'll do a little adjustment to make sure we're dead on our time of mark, and we are. And uh, I think we can go ahead and put our tensioner in there in our belt. Unless I'm forgetting something, guys, am I forgetting something? Please tell me. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think I am, but we torqued all that, torqued all that. Tighten that down, new cam seal, new crank seal. Yeah, I think we're good. I don't know what it is about a live stream. It's got me kind of flustered uh, in uh, my normal doings. So, all right, we got our bolt. Where's our new tensioner? New tensioner is right here. And we are about to have to kill this live because we're about to hit sunset here in South Carolina. Our new tensioner is marked, what does it say? It says GMB, but I don't see Japan or anything else in that uh, bearing, or old one that came off. It does say what? What does it say? NSK? Koyo? One or the other? Who knows? Anyway, all right. We got that. Where's our spring at? There's our spring. Do we recollect which way the spring is supposed to go? I don't think it matters, but I'll go ahead and uh, hook it in the cover. Jeez, come on. I know it's cold, but geez, fingers, thing. Thing for me, fingers. All right, we'll hook that in there. We'll hook the spring into the ear here. And then we will get ourselves on that. Uh, dowel there and we'll put our bolt through tighten 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 and take our open end wrench again and We will push that tensioner arm up, stretch that spring out. Not that way. That way. Or, geez, it's not that tight. I can probably look my hand. Let's see. Put all the strength of the finger on it and tighten, tighten, tighten. And tightened. So our spring's loaded up. We grab our time belt out of here. I don't believe this one's marked like the Subaru belt, although I mean, these engines are super easy to time. So uh, yada, yada, yada. Looks like we got a, yeah, we got a new service sticker like the Subaru one comes with to put on the timing cover for uh, marking your date of the last replacement and mileage. Get that pulled out. And uh, we do have markings, I'm assuming, crankshaft mark and camshaft mark here. So we'll go ahead and sling this on here real quick. I wish EJs were uh, this easy to time up, but uh, they are not. So time mark there, 
wrap around cam pulley under the water pump over to the crank pulley uh, get on there line our mark up line our mark up come on how did you get off uh, there we go so easy you can turn it by hand all right Now we uh, get down here, get under our tensioner, and get on our cam. Why oh, is this so tight? Why are you so tight, Belt? Why are you so tight? Why are you so tight? happened here it's like we have an issue with our tensioner causing an issue possibly and that is a two fall uh, let's get our wrench. Is our tensioner all the way up? Is that what our issue is here? I believe it is. I believe our tensioner is uh, creeping on us. Oh, geez. Come on. Oh, come on. What can I push against this with? Uh, where'd my pry bar go? Where did my pry bar go? There we go. All right, let's get in here. Oh, let's get our time belt out of here before we wreck it. Let's not do that. Let's not accidentally stab our new time belt, and then we're good. All right, let's. Go all the way, buddy, go all the way. Why are you not going all the way? There's still room for you to go. Why are you not going? Right, let's see if that'll work better. Try us again. Time of marks lined up up there. How far off are we right here? Just a smidge. Let's turn that back. And there we go. Now our time and marks are all lined up. And our belt marks are lined up. All right. Good there. Get on that water pump. Good there. And get under there. Get under there. Marks lined up. Belt marks lined up. Time and belt. Everything's lined up. Let's turn you just a hair. All right, I'm satisfied with that. And Kapowie. Tensioner is uh, attentioning. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Time mark still lined up. Time mark still lined up. Sent you down. And look at our torque specs for you again. 
and uh, we're good to go on this time belt install. Uh, other than that, we got to clean up our timing covers, uh, do something with that timing cover seal that is askew, put our dipstick back in there, and uh, yeah, thermostat, coolant, and uh, we're good. So let's go back to my video <laughs> and uh, see if I uh, tighten up the tensioner in said video. So we're putting tensioner on there, putting the belt on there, yada, 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 yada. And loosen the tensioner bolt. We already did that. Um, what is the torque? Come on past me, tell present me what the, yeah, yeah, they're lined up, we know. Yep, Saint the first rodeo. Where's the torque spec? Where's the torque spec? Oh, you're doing a check spin? Don't be a wuss. You did it right. You know it's right. And torque spec for the tensioner is 24.5 newton meters, 25 newton meters. All right, 25 newton meters. Can I do it without a torque adapter like we showed in that video? Why did I use a torque adapter is what I want to know. Probably about to answer my question on why I use the torque adapter when I try to get my torque wrench in here. Well, it works. Why was I using a torque adapter? And 25 newton meters. We are set. So, now, do we do a torque? <laughs> do we do a test spin now that uh we're all done and uh tension up see how much nicer that is than when we took it off and the tensioner wasn't tension and the belt was flopping around i swear if it would have been me it would have jumped diamond and blown up that's just the way my luck is somehow this guy skirted a uh, disaster and uh he did not have said issue with his lucky fella so we'll go ahead and slide this seal in before i forget about this seal if it'll slide in now. And we forgot about the seal back here at the water pump, but it's so tight, I don't think we really need to worry about it. So, uh, that seal basically went in all the way, but it's a little proud because it's uh, old and swollen. So, if we can get it to come back out of there. And we did. We'll take a razor blade and we'll cut just a little bit off of it so that it will sit flush. The worst part of doing these is uh, torquing the crank pulley. I created that tool to hold the crank pulley to torque the bolt and the uh, on the last two I did, on my personal ones, but uh, sorry for the camera shake. Um, I don't know, maybe this KTC tool will go in there, but I don't think it will. I don't think the pins that it comes with are small enough to go in there and grab a hold of that. I have to get out my homemade tool once again. But let's slide this seal back in there. I'd rather have seals on the top and not the bottom, just because normally junk's gonna come from the top down leak inside. So if we can uh, protect it from the top down, it's better than not. So got that in there. This seal at the back is at the back and it's low, so I'm not too terribly concerned about it. Again, we weren't provided with one. The one we have is swollen and crappy. Uh, if anything, let's uh, let's go ahead and just cut the bottom part off and at least put that in to block that. Uh, we won't worry too much about the uh, top part of it because if it's going to leak in or stuff's going to sling up, get in there anywhere, it's going to be at the bottom anyway. So if we can protect the bottom at least, we're better off. All right, so we just cut the bottom part off. So we can get the slide in that gap. Probably will not cause it's so swollen and gross. But we're gonna try anyway. And uh, it's kind of going in there kind of going in there and we got it in there so all right so that's sealed at least at the bottom i'm not too terribly worried about that little slit back there behind 
And uh, you know what, I think we'll call that. So let's go ahead and start cleaning up the time belt cover, uh, our holy time belt color, cover, where uh, uh, again, we saw that the uh, crank pulley really destroyed it, ate into it really good from it being misaligned. Uh, again, I think it was cause this gasket was sitting proud and uh, held that cover into the back of that pulley and uh, was the downfall of that. So we'll get our old seal out of there. Again, it's swollen and too long. And uh, we'll just start cleaning this up, get it ready to go on there. I can hear you now. Mr. Super, Mr. Super, you didn't do a test spin. You didn't do a test spin. And eh, we'll do a test spin. But I've done three, four of these now. I'm fairly confident we're good. All our time marks lined up. Our tension, our tension correctly. Uh, we're not worried. I'm not worried. You might be worried. I'm not worried. But uh, we'll do it. So let's knock off all the crap on this timing cover. Well, it is uh, covered. At least the pointer didn't get messed up. The pointer is uh, crucial in uh, adjusting your timing. Now I think about it, hopefully the uh, pointer wasn't too terribly off kilter when I set the timing with the timing light the other day uh, due to it being not sitting proud. Very well could have thrown it off, but hopefully if it did, it was uh, minuscule because the truck seems to be running great. Uh, I drove it uh, up the road to haul my trash off to my uh, convenience center just as a test drive after I got it running after the uh, no start issue, just to make sure that I had got it figured out and it wasn't just gonna be, you know, run a little bit and then cut off and not wanna run again. So run it for a while, didn't have an issue. Again, drove it up to the convenience center, dropped off the trash from the shop and uh, she did good. So go ahead and get this cleaned up and get that seal ready. And uh, again, guys, <laughs> probably getting to the end of the uh, stream here because well, we're basically done now other than uh, you know feeling cool enough and all that but it is dark we're getting dark and uh, my phone's probably about to croak on me and I've not filmed a TikTok video or a YouTube short or a Instagram uh, reel today so I probably need to do that and uh, I haven't opened up uh, my advent calendar my Ghidorah or uh Hot set two advent calendars for today, so I need to do that and film that as well, because I know at least three or four of you like that. <laughs> Not many of you uh, care about it. The last two years I was doing shorts on them daily, and uh, that didn't fly so well. So this year I said, well, I'll just do it as a story post, and uh, seems to be doing better. This is a story or a whatnot although i just now realized i haven't been doing it for you guys here on youtube so if you're not following me on instagram and you're not following me on tiktok and you have accounts uh go follow me there because uh you don't always see everything on the youtube machine here so got that all scraped up we got the brake parts clean the ultra mega mr subaru's favorite concoction on the world on the planet and uh Get that wiped down. Sounds like somebody is shooting off some guns down in the woods behind my property. Or they're illegally hunting my property. They like to do that. And they like to trespass on the farm and uh, go hunting. I've been dealing with that basically all my life. <laughs> you got a lot of property out in the country. And it's hunting season. It's hard to keep track of... Uh, every corner of it every bit of it especially when it's just me myself and i out here but i have caught several i've actually uh found two deer stands on my property just this year I usually find a couple of uh either deer stands or blinds and i just think it's so brazen for someone to not just trespass on your property and go hunting, but to uh, put up a deer stand or a, a blind on your property and leave it there. Not even just pack it up when they were done that day uh, illegally hunting and trespassing on my property, but they just set up camp and left it to come back later for it. And uh, they were rudely awakened when they got back and 
found that their stand was not there and their blinds were not there because uh, I wasn't going to have them on my property, so I took them. <laughs> at the, uh, at the um, you know, recommendation of the game warden, he said, uh, you know, if they're inside and on your property line, they're yours. So uh, take them up. So one way to get them disheartened from uh, trespassing and hunting my property is uh, losing a couple hundred dollars worth of tree stands or blinds. So time and cover is sufficiently cleaned up for as destroyed as it is and uh we'll get to uh working on this seal and cut it to shape cut it down to size to uh fit in the groove There's a lot of oil and junk built up on it but luckily it's basically just a little uh silicone rope seal it's nothing really uh crazy so uh yeah We'll just feed it around and uh, cut off the excess. Excess, excess, excess. I swear, English can be a tricky language sometimes, can it? So many similar words. See why people say that English is such a difficult language to learn if it's not your primary language compared to learning other languages. I studied Spanish for many, many years in high school. I think I took four years of Spanish and still can't speak it proficiently, but at least I can uh, usually understand when someone is speaking to me in Spanish and I can read it fairly well, but uh, my brain just cannot translate and uh, put it to my mouth to speak without looking like a dummy. I just can't do that rapid enough. Still would love to learn Japanese. I still really want to go to Japan. Hopefully, I will be going to Japan in spring of 2024. But uh, it would be very helpful to learn some Japanese between then and now. Not because uh, it's not hard uh, to get around Japan not speaking Japanese. There's English everywhere. It's very friendly to foreigners, especially English-speaking foreigners, but it would just be nice to uh, know some stuff, so go ahead and get that up there. Mr. Subaru, you're not doing a test spin! You're putting the timing cover on! I uh, know. I'll, I'll still do it. I promise. I just want to get this up here, so we're gonna... Just put this up here. We can still see through the uh, hole there. Uh, our time of marks. Where is my 10 millimeter? Oh no! 10 millimeter joke! Just kidding, it's right here. So, hopefully, we've got that little uh, seal there flush enough where it's not going to cause an issue between our crank pulley and our timing cover this time around. Dang it. Oh no, I'm dropping all my screws. Or bolts. Bolts. I really, really love these sockets from Coken. They're expensive. Don't get me wrong there. They are high dollar, but you do get what you pay for. That is for sure. All right, that one is definitely for the dipstick because it's not covered in oil, and these two are definitely for the bottom of the timing cover because they are covered in oil from where we had all those leaks from the cam and crank seal. Or cam seal, crank seal didn't appear to be leaking. So clean up our bolts, brake part cleaner. Rag. Make them presentable. Oh, we're about to uh, lose our light. And uh, I'm about to pack up and head to Charlotte anyway for my girlfriends. Spend the weekends with her. Still crazy. Uh, 
when you guys actually run me down in uh, public. It's only happened a handful of times out and about. It happened a ton at SEMA, but of course, you know, it was SEMA. Uh, I was at the Costco in Charlotte uh, one day and I had a, a guy come up to me and ask me if I was Mr. Subaru. And uh, one day I was in Ikea in Concord, North Carolina, and I had the same. Or uh, He actually didn't approach me. He actually didn't approach me. He uh, DM'd me later to ask if it was me because uh, he was with his girlfriend and she's like, don't be weird, don't go up to him or something. And he ended up not uh, coming up to me and talking to me because he wasn't quite sure if it was me or not because contrary to popular belief, I don't just walk around in a Subaru Technician shirt all the time. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he messaged me later and uh, asked if I was at the Ikea in uh, Concord. And I uh, confirmed it was. So. A couple of you have seen me out and about. So uh, don't be afraid to come up and talk to me. I'm not going to bite you. Uh, I just fear that some of the people that hate me online might come up to me one day and just knock me out in public or something. You never know. People be getting crazy. So, uh, all right, we're losing light. Uh, we're getting down here to the end. How long have we been live for? An hour and 38 minutes? Jesus, this is probably my longest live stream to date. I do need to probably start doing more live streams. I haven't done a live stream Q&A in so long. I'm sure there's plenty of you that uh, want to ask me stuff. And uh, I try to answer all the comments, but I just get overwhelmed between uh, TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube. I just got so many social media and, and emails too. I mean, I've got so many platforms and ways people can contact me the disc gets it gets uh overwhelming sometimes and uh, i just can't get to everything and everybody and uh still live life so uh i try to get to as many of you can but sometimes uh your stuff falls through the cracks and i do apologize for that it's not anything i'm doing uh on purpose or to be rude or mean or nasty it's just there's only so many hours in the day and there's uh stuff I got to do that uh, isn't always social media related that, uh, you know, just has to get done. So, all right, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the crank pulley. I've got the crank bolt. Where's my crank pulley? If you see it, shout at me because it must have grown legs and, oh, I got it. Did not grow legs and grow, run off on me. Sorry again, guys, if I'm missing your uh, comments in the live. I'm going to try to scroll back here in a minute. I'm just trying to get this all put together before nightfall, which is <laughs> rapidly, rapidly approaching me. It's not really coming through on the camera as it's darker, but it is darker out here. <laughs> oh, that was a bad mistake. Uh, always wear your safety glasses, guys. Oh my god, why did I do that? All right, let's see if we can. Ah, uh, let's see if we can. Uh, beast or over my hand. Woo! The Eno Seven, so small and so light, you can turn her by hand. Ow! Jesus. All right, one rotation. Whew, have I got the hand strip to do that again? Oh, let's see. Don't be a wuss now, Mr. Subaru. Oh, jeez. Mm. Ah, let's see. All right. Kind of marks are lined up. There's our test spin, guys. We're good. We are good, which I knew we would be. All right, a little bit of oil on our threads of our crank bolt and under the washer. Doodly doodly do. And we'll get the torque wrench and torque depth spec here in a minute. Why are you staying on? My light is on on my M12 uh, impact driver. 
and, and I got a feeling that it might be due to the fact that, uh, I don't know, three months ago I was doing a valve body in a F-150 and it kind of took a bath in uh, transmission fluid. And then before I started live on this and I took the drain out of the water pump, uh, it got hung on the water pump uh, drain bolt and coolant poured all into the top of it. So it's working, but for some reason these stupid lights are staying on now and not timing out. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I'm gonna watch it now and see if it was just a fluke. Now that I've uh, hit the button and uh, get all the junk out of there. We're not gonna go this far without making it look nice. So get that clean and we need to clean our upper time and cover throw that on there throw our dipstick in there and i'm gonna peace out on you guys because it's 5 11 and uh i'm cold and i'm hungry and i've got to drive to charlotte and uh yeah it's friday so uh, i do appreciate all of you for hanging out with me and watching this uh pretty probably boring live stream i mean i've done <coughs> oh that was a lot of dirt i've done more uh running back and forth to the shop to the toolbox i think that i've been on camera or it's about 50 50 and uh i'm cleaning this right now but i don't even think you can see it oh uh, yeah maybe you can because i haven't been paying attention too much to the phone and unfortunately i've been neglecting the comment section quite a bit so apologies all the way around guys so uh Let's get this knocked out. And then I guess tomorrow, if I come to the farm, I will uh, work on that uh, rocker cover gasket. Do you guys need a third EN07 rocker cover gasket video? I think we've done it at least three times. This might actually be the fourth time. Uh, I don't think y'all need one. I don't know if I want to film uh, and edit another identical video. So we'll probably just skip that. Or maybe I'll save it till Monday and we'll do another live stream uh, doing it. I don't know. We'll see. Probably not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, getting the time and cover clean up. That light is still not turned off. What are you doing, Milwaukee? What are you doing? I opened up the whole clamshell. I blew all the coolant out. Like, I did what I was supposed to. I mean, aside from not getting coolant on it in the first place. I mean, it was an accident. It happens. But, for love of God, cut off. Time out. I cleaned all the mess out of you. Act right. Do better. All right. Subaru 4. Yeah. Looking nice. We do got a timing belt sticker on here, but uh, this looks like it says 10,000 kilometers or 100,000 kilometers. I don't know. But uh, whatever. We'll put that new sticker on here and date it, and uh, they'll be good to go. I can't remember what the actual recommended service interval is for the uh, time belt on the EN07. I know it's not 100,000 kilometers, or at least I don't think it is. Maybe it is. I thought it was less for uh, the K vehicles. So, uh, yeah, look at there. Shined up. All right, let's go through and uh, pop this last cover on and throw our dipstick back in there. That stupid ground cable, get out of the way. Bada bing, bada boom, there we go. All right, where's your bolts? There they are. Yeah, the light's not going off. I must have, I guess I'm going to have to pull the battery out of this impact now. Every time I use it, geez. Send off Milwaukee. <sighs> or maybe I'll take it apart one more time and uh, try to clean it with some uh, electrical contact cleaner or something because it's still, it's still burning. It's still burning. Took the battery out and they're still glowing slightly. Put the battery back in and it's still. Jeez, that's not good. 
that sucks. I just got to go in for repair now. So, uh, geez. That, yeah. No es bueno. No es bueno. Didn't want that. Did not want that to happen. But it was an accident. I did not do it maliciously, of course. I want to fill my own impact gun with uh, transmission fluid and coolant. What we got? What we got? We got 65 people still sticking around. We got 97 thumbs up. Thank you guys for that. Thank you for the support and watching this uh, really probably crappy live stream. Uh, I don't do enough of these really to know how to do them well. Uh, I'm not like some of the people that, you know, have multiple cameras and angles and all that good stuff. I'm just growing up here. We're, uh, we're missing a bolt. I got another bolt, but I thought it was for the dipstick. There's the dipstick shear bolt. I thought it was that bolt or that hole. Maybe it's this one. Uh, crud. Well, let's uh, at least get these on here. Is my dipstick now? There is my dipstick. Make sure we don't have any schmoo on it. Get that there. A little bit of lubes oil on the uh, o ring. Run that back down in there. Oh. <laughs> Look at there, it shares that one. I did it right. It's different on these because of that uh, EGR pipe running through there. Get in the hole. All right. And. That's it, that's it. All we gotta do is torque the bad boy there and put her belt back on and put her cover back on and our shock back on but we're not going to do all that so uh yeah i think we'll call it there thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching the live stream uh, apologies again on uh missing some of you guys comments um i'll try to go back through if this saves i don't know if this automatically uploads or whatever and uh, try to go through the live comments and answer you if it lets me do that. I don't know if it even does. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, be looking for the video on the no start on this on Sunday at the normal time. So, thank you guys and uh, peace out as soon as I figure out how to end this live stream. I think this does it. And uh, goodbye.